Hello, I'm PR, and that's Kate. And this is the Midwife Crisis Podcast Microsode. <laughs> Where we follow up on previous episodes, answer listener emails, and just give you that little extra midwife love. It's like a warm hug. So today, we are so excited to have an email from our friend, Amanda. She writes, Hi, PR and Kate. I'm so excited that you're back with more episodes on the podcast. We are too. I enjoyed the recent upload and delving into the different career paths. I was wondering, when you speak to the different scopes, are there midwives who do not attend births but only schedule appointments with women to talk about issues and concerns, i.e. with menstruation, pain during sex, low libido, etc.? Also, do you live in Canada or in the U.S., and could this differ between the two? Thank you again. Looking forward to hearing more. Thank you so much, Amanda, for your email. We're going to do our best to try to answer for you. Thank you. We always appreciate feedback and questions. We live in the U.S., and yes, there are midwives of that variety. There are all types of midwives. Um, many work their way into that position after staying up all night for years mm -hmm. and then decide that they don't want to stay up all night and do births or work their schedule whatever kind of way for whatever reason, for family reasons, for aging reasons, for not to burn out or all mm -hmm. kinds of decisions that they make. And they want to focus on women's health care outside of that whole intrapartum and birth um, spectrum, antepartum, intrapartum, postpartum, uh, the whole birth spectrum. And so in addition, there are advanced practice um, women's health specialists like uh, APRNs um, who and PAs who specialize in women's health mm -hmm. who do something similar and they just are focused on GYN. Some of them do see um, obstetric patients too, but they just do women's health. And so, and I don't want to say just do as that, that's a little belittling, it's not. but they focus as in their focus is mm -hmm. on um, women's health. And so they do precisely what you were, what you were speaking of. Um, talk to women about, their issues with their periods, with pain, with infection, with low libido, with, you know, or high libido and why their husband or their partner or their wife doesn't want to engage with them, be intimate, that kind of thing. So, yeah, the, we address all of those sorts of issues. Um, so the and the truth of the matter, Amanda, is that all of us are needed of all kinds of um, focus. The, the way we focus is needed in all areas. And so um, just we don't sort of shun or look down or look aside or askance at anyone who doesn't do births or does mm -hmm. a certain kind of practice because I feel like um, our, you know we're needed in all areas. And so if we can fulfill needs for women, then we're doing a good job. And um, I think that, that it's important that we're providing care with compassion and skill, of course. And so um, that's what matters more. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with that. Um, so I actually know a fantastic OBGYN who I resides. Do we do. Yeah. A, a few. But one of them specifically who resides in the United States now but was a midwife in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, she is a super incredible human being. She actually chose to go back to school to become an MD because she wanted to provide GYN surgical care for women. She wanted to really be able to just do the complete care. Um, she often does trips to Africa to repair fistula, which for um, people who don't know what fistula is, it's where there's sort of a hole between um, in the pelvic floor sort of between the uh, vagina and the rectum. And so you know, when they communicate, they're not supposed to communicate. It right. should be a wall between them. Exactly. And so for many of these women who have just had um, childbirth or some type of trauma that's caused this, um, they can be shunned, you know, if they're leaking, you know, basically feces from their vagina. Um, it's upsetting to them, of course, but they, there are women who are literally sometimes kicked out of their villages or, you know, disowned by their husbands for these issues, can't leave the house. So, I mean, it can be really, truly debilitating. And the fact that she 
literally took on, you know, school and student loans and everything when she didn't have to just so she could provide this help for women. Um, it's just amazing. So she is that the is only amazing. Canadian midwife I know, um, and an incredible human. And She's we the just only one I know too. <laughs> we just we just love her. Um so my super, super brief brief research that I did um on Dr. Google, as I'm sure lots of you have, um, showed that in Canada, as far as I could tell, there aren't as many different types of midwives as there are in the US. So in the US we have CPMs, LMs, CNMs, so all different sort of types that can do certain things or not do certain things, have different backgrounds or don't have different backgrounds, you know, can perform in a hospital clinic setting or can only perform in a house, that kind of thing. So um, in Canada, it looks like most of their midwives just have have a bachelor's degree in midwifery. um, And it looks like they have a more strict exclusion criteria for care. So it looks like as far as I could tell, again, not an expert, but it looks like they cared more for low-risk, full-term, healthy women. So really that kind of well-woman model. Um, whereas here, we really have the opportunity and the privilege to be in collaborative care. CNMs can really care for literally everyone, you know, you know, no matter what's going on with them. So if there are any Canadian midwives out there or midwives from any other country, or if I'm just totally wrong, please, please shoot us an email, educate us. We'd love to compare and contrast our practices um, and just really kind of get to know midwifery around the whole globe. Yeah, I would be fascinated to know um, how midwives practice in other in other countries and other areas. I was in Australia in the spring and I spoke to actually an art dealer whose sister is a midwife. So I wasn't getting the information firsthand and she was trying to tell me a little bit about, I was asking her questions. Does your sister do home births? Does your sister? And so it was all third hand information, but she said, no, she works in a hospital and it was interesting, but not the info that I really want. I really wanted the nitty gritty. So yes, please reach out to us and uh, let us know how you practice, what you're doing. Um, And we would love to, um, you know, share that with our listeners. Yep. So let's talk about self-care corner. This is a new little thing we're going to try. <laughs> yeah, because we think that that's important. We, we're always talking about how it's a radical act and you really need to do it. And um, if you can hear, you may or may not, if, you're, if you are um, a follower of ours, that I sound like Lester Holt instead of myself. But um, uh, it's because I have a little bit of an upper respiratory thing going on. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about that. We felt that since we tout self-care so frequently, we we're going to try on our microsoles to share a bit of our own self-care. And um, I'm going to get into what I did. But what's your self-care item this week, Kate? What did right, you do? Yeah. Mine's pretty easy. So basically, um, this past week, I came off of what I consider my hardest rotation. Um, it's a rotation that I have to do every six weeks because there are six midwives that take call in my practice. Um, and it's basically where I work a normal work week, which for me is a 24-hour call and two eight-hour office days, so 40 hours. Um, but that's followed by a 24-hour call on the Friday and the Sunday. And then that next week, I return again to the normal office load. So it's almost like working three weeks of work over two weeks. It's a lot of call, which call can mean, you know, uh, we say mm. call mm. Um, and, and people think like, oh, you get to sleep at home and you just like answer your mm. phone. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, we work at a very busy practice. PR takes call for us as well. Um, and it's, you're awake for 24 hours basically. So knowing that I was going into that really serious rotation um, just prior to starting that week, I went up to Boston to visit my very best friend um, who is gestating beautifully and uh, spend some time in the morning with her and what I like to call my guide son. So we're not a particularly religious. So he's almost like a godson to me, but without the god part. So guide son, I'm his guide. Um, and then I went to see one of my favorite bands that hasn't toured in nearly 10 years, Angels and Airwaves. So I went alone, which I love to do. Sometimes people think that's weird, but I love to do stuff by myself. Got right up to the front of the stage, sang my heart out for you know two straight hours. It was so magical. Um, I love her. It was so good. Actually, the next day, I was having a little like post-concert sadness. PR had called me and I was like, I'm just, I have so many feelings. I used so much emotion last night. I have to process it. But, she um, did. But it was, it was awesome. And just really allowing myself to do something really great before, you know, what I consider a tougher week was, was my self-care. How about you? Well, I'm not dead yet, even though I <laughs> felt for these past few days. We need that you. I was dying. 
Um, but I am sick. And one of the things I love about doing this podcast is that we try to keep things transparent. Um, we're midwives, we're not actors. And so even though I'm a little bit sick, um, I'm still was able to record and I'm happy to do that and happy that I'm happy to be working with you. I want to give you a big audio hug. Oh. Um, so, you know, today we're going hard, even though I'm in this state. Um, last week I was on call for 24 hours and I had 24- in between my 24 hour call. Yes. It was me on Friday, her on Saturday, me on Sunday. <laughs> yes. And then I had 24 hours off and then I were, went to work 40 hours after that. And midway through my 40, I got this illness from someone and it knocked me on my ass. Um, cause it wasn't just the upper respiratory thing. And I got pink eye in one eye and pink eye in the other eye. And, you know, you try to push through, but that's not helpful. You can't go seeing patients with all this viral, um, illness and germs and, right. um, madness. It really isn't healthy. Exposing your coworkers and your patients, um, to this kind of stuff is, um, cruel, Right. And Especially our vulnerable populations. I mean, yes. we care for pregnant women yes. who are going to pick up, you know, whatever is being put out in the world. And they have many of them have small children also. And so it's just cruel. It's not it's not wise. It's not it doesn't mean that you're strong and you're thugging it out. It means that you're silly. You're stupid, mm-hmm. really, because <laughs> <laughs> you are because you're just going and spreading all that mess all over the creation and um, putting people at harm in harm's way. It's not it's not a good look. And And so my radical act of self-care was to not go to work. I stayed home and I went from the couch to the bed, to the bed, to the couch. And I pushed fluids. I rested a lot. I didn't eat a lot because I didn't, I didn't have much of an appetite and just a lot of hot fluids and and hot toddies, by the way, (laughs) and some Tylenol. I'm not a big medication in that way, but, you know, try to just um, nurture myself as I would um, someone else you know, we don't, we take care of other people, but I just said, you know, imagine if I was the other person Mm -hmm. and take care of myself that way. Um, I'm still fighting. I'm I'm this, this battling this particular bug, but I'm feeling energetic enough to get back in the game and take on my tasks again. And I don't think that I'm so contagious. I probably sound worse than, um, than, you know, uh, I actually feel needless to say, we haven't touched each other. Well, we tried not to touch each other. No. I, I kept putting my hand on our leg earlier. <laughs> Hands on legs. That doesn't, you won't catch anything doing that. But yeah, I try to tell people don't let's not hug. Let's not touch like that. Um, but you know, if you don't take care of yourself, the, the moral of the story is you, you have to take care of yourself so that you can take care of others. That's right. And, um, I think that's something we try to take care of others without taking care of ourselves mm-hmm. and it leaves us void. Yep. And, and so, we want to be good role models, role, role models for yeah. you guys. We want to yeah. show you that we are also taking time for ourselves. And they need to see that so that they can um, respect your self-care and learn to do it for themselves as well. That's right. And so I think that's the, that's my self-care act for that's the week. That's our microsode. We really need a song. So we're, we're, we're working, we're on, working it. on it. We're working on it. Is, <laughs> it is being worked on. So we're looking forward to rolling that out sometime in the not too distant future. That's right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we would like to thank Baobab Tree Studios, Rev Kev, Eamon on the recording device, uh, all of our friends, all of our family. I want to especially thank PR for just killing it, just working through it and being here with me. Um, and I hope I was able to take a little bit of the uh, shoulder, some of the, the oh, responsibility for it. You did a fabulous job. I can't believe that I didn't give birth to her. (laughs) Just love her. Anyway, um, thank you so much to all of you who make this podcast possible. Without you, we would not be here. No, we would not. And so keep listening, please. And be sure to subscribe on Spotify, iTunes, or wherever you listen. And please like and follow us on Facebook. Book Instagram at the Midwife Crisis Podcast or email us at Midwife Crisis Podcast at gmail.com. That's right. Email us, please share with us your radical um, self acts, self care acts, um, and just questions, concerns, whatever you want to hear about. Uh, maybe you're fixing my story about Canadian midwives, whatever. We, we want to hear about it. So until next time, everyone, perform some self care. And please wash your hands. <laughs> Bye. Bye.